Give us more stories about your garbage internet situation. Oh, uh, it is actually not garbage now. Oh? Uh, because, yeah, the local town suddenly suddenly realized that mm -hmm. after one of the council members signed up for this Dish Network internet service, mm -hmm. that satellite internet sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no fucking shit yeah. are you in an so, area uh, that gets like really like snow or like really hot uh yes yeah okay that makes sense uh, yeah. it, it does snow out here <laughs> and it does get mildly warm in fact uh i live in the state of ohio for clarification for everybody uh i when think i kind of got snow, that from the shirt yeah well i mean <laughs> it, it could also be oregon linux fest but it's actually ohio linux fest. that's fair that's fair that's fair yeah no uh, but uh you know uh in Ohio, uh, the most snow that we, the most snow that we get out of a day is maybe like ten inches, so like that much snow. Uh -huh. There, are, there are places that get a lot more. Mm -hmm. There are places that get a lot less. I recognize that. Sure. But the the, the thing about Ohio is that snow very quickly turns into water, mm -hmm. which means that winter here is a giant muddy mess. Oh. And every time it gets super cold, all of that mud freezes. And now we've got ice everywhere. <laughs> now, the secret, the secret about this and why I'm mentioning it specifically is because snow is not bad for electronics. Mm -hmm. Water turning into ices because when water freezes, it mm -hmm. expands. Boom, science. <laughs> uh, so... Water expands <laughs> something like 2.5 times when it turns into ice. That's why your ice. That's why when you're filling an, an ice cube tray to freeze it, freeze and make yourself some ice cubes, mm. you don't fill the tray all the way to the top. You fill part. You fill it like halfway. Is it, does it expand that much? Uh, some, it depends on how quickly it freezes. Sure, sure. I, I believe. But it does. It does grow in volume. Nine percent greater. I don't know. We got two hundred and fifty percent. No, okay, okay. So it, I'm just throwing like random. I, I, I'm not a scientist, all I, right. I'm not a scientist either. That's why I went to Google. I I own and operate a factory. I'm not a scientist. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I hire I hire you scientists. Hit, you, you hit a machine with eight tons of pressure with a fucking hammer. Yeah, you're clearly yes. not a scientist. <laughs> I mean, it worked. So yeah, you okay? What what happened with your internet situation? Because you were saying, okay, uh, they tried so, out anyways, the satellite; it was garbage. Uh, he he pushed out an emergency <laughs> legislative bill mm -hmm. to realloc to cancel the contract with Dish Network and sue them for the refund, which they got pretty quick. <laughs> uh, and then they then took all the money that they got back mm -hmm. and dumped it on the ISP. So mm -hmm. my ISP will in fact last for the next fifteen years. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So, my mom and pop ISP will continue into next year. Sweet, that's awesome. And at, and as part of the upgrade, they get to redeploy their entire network, and they're redeploying with fiber optic lines. Wow. Yeah, they're going. They're going. I'm going from phone lines to fiber. Fucking <laughs> hell! That's a nice upgrade. Yeah. Uh, and uh. I might have, you know, influenced the network admin to place a hub directly across the street from me. That way I can get fiber to house. Because, <laughs> oh. you know, uh, technically I don't live in town, but I live in a small community outside that's just outside of town. Mm -hmm. So we can just, so that's justification to put a hub right there. Because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this ISP serves all of the buildings in this little spot that I'm in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it makes sense to have that hub there. That way you can run service to all the buildings. Right, right. So I'm going to get fiber directly to the house. Nice! Like, the only trade-off is that uh, I did, in fact, have to pay for this. Sure, sure. Uh, it was not a tiny amount, but it is already paid for, and I'm not going to disclose how much I paid for, because then that tells you how rich I am, which secretly I'm not nearly that rich anymore. <laughs> yeah, five, uh, five is expensive, is... Yeah, yeah. Well, the fun fact is that fiber is not actually as expensive as you think it is. Well, digging holes because, is expensive. Well, they're putting this up on okay. poles. Okay, putting on poles. Oh, yeah, you so guys do on poles, they're, dude. They're not digging. Uh, yeah, we, we put all our wires on poles you guys here because, you know, if we... Well, here's the thing. If we put it underground, mm. it gets exposed to the water and ice. That actually is a good point. <laughs>
Which I don't know which wire you want to fix. Do you want to fix the one that's up on the pole, or do you want to fix the one that's underground? Mm, that's actually a fair argument. In yeah, Australia, and, we uh, just put the only thing that's in, you, like that's not underground is the power lines, and a lot of a lot of places do underground power lines as well. Yeah, I mean it. It looks better, and honestly, it's bit probably more environmentally friendly for that wire to be under the ground rather than above the ground. Well, so but it makes sense. Them. There are there are legitimate use cases for it being above ground. Yeah, okay, that's fair, that's fair. Uh, that said, if the fiber line breaks, uh, there is no such thing as just splicing it back together. You have to replace the whole run. Mm, good yeah. point. Yeah. Which, thankfully, thankfully, I think the deployment plan is for every five miles, there's go they're going to install a relay to help boost the fiber optic signal and, you know, keep that light being nice and bright. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to be a break in fiber line every five miles. The mm -hmm. issue is that if fi that fiber line breaks, you have to replace five miles of line. Mm -hmm. Which I, I believe that there are some patches that you can do, mm -hmm. but it's not like an actual fix. It's basically just like a band-aid for temporary service. Right, right. It's not as simple which, as like taking a copper line, just like boop. Yeah, just which, you know, if, uh, you know, you're a massive <laughs> corporate ISP like here in the United States, that temporary fix might be temporarily permanent <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you might just keep pocketing the uh the money you've been given for 30 years yeah and but never do anything. thankfully thankfully the big advantage of fiber fiber optic lines is the the wire itself has mm -hmm. no actual cap on the amount of capacity it can serve mm -hmm. at least not one that we've been able to measure as a species of humans with our current technology mm -hmm. we have been completely unable to measure that the one thing that the only limiter is everything that connects to the wire. Mm -hmm. That's uh the that's the spli splices, the boosters, and all that. That's right, right. that's all you really need to upgrade for a modern service. Mm -hmm. Which you know, uh, their net their network switch serve can serve up to like uh, I think they said it was a three hundred terab terabit switch. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, and that's the small one. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh they're gonna have we're gonna have some bandwidth here. Yeah, so what sort of speeds are you possibly looking at for yourself? Uh I am no longer gonna be gonna be on the dumb pipe. Uh instead I'm gonna be on a normal person service. Mm -hmm. Uh and I'm going to just be going for just standard gigabit, even though I can go significantly faster if I so want to. <laughs> How much? How much is gigabit going to be for you? Just, just out of curiosity, if you can say. Uh, that. if I don't, if I, to avoid disclosing my super special me discount. How uh, much would a it, normal person pay for it? We'll say. Uh, the normal person would probably pay like one hundred twenty dollars a month for it. Right. Okay. For it. Yeah, because you know, uh, this is new rollout. They gotta like pay back bills, and they're they're doing the things where they're promising that the bill might go down in the future after they get everything paid off, which this ISP does actually do because they've done it before. But that doesn't mean that they're going to do it to that other massive companies like, you know, Verizon, mm -hmm. Spectrum won't, won't as well. Mm -hmm. They, most of the time, they just don't. I, okay, the Australian dollar is obviously weak in the US dollar, but I pay $110 for 250 by 25 Yeah. So I, th I think a hundred. So you have one hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty. Let's see what one hundred and twenty USD is. One hundred and twenty USD to AUD is uh, one hundred and eighty-four. I would pay one hundred and eighty-four dollars like for. Yeah, I'll pay one hundred and eighty-four dollars for gigabit. They'll. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Lighted. Uh, the idea is that even though like. The main reason why I'm getting fiber to, fiber to house is mm. because you know I'm less than a mile away from the from from uh, the the actual ISP. Mm -hmm. That's why I that's why I was on the dump pipe for the DSL to begin with because you know I happen to be physically close enough that they could justify it. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, for the for the viewers, if you don't know what I mean by dump pipe, it yeah. means that it means that I had no actual cap on my data speeds. It was literally served to me as fast as it can possibly be served to me that that's really it mm -hmm. which of course means that if the uh network is under a heavy load uh i'm i am naturally going to be the lowest priority on the totem pole unless you know i 
dial number two on my speed dial and go like, hey, can I get network priority, please? <laughs> <laughs> Which I have done before for the sake of distro hacking. Mm hmm. What sort of uh, what sort of like max speeds had you ever seen through that method? Obviously, it was still DSL, uh, so like you know. I have gotten up to sixty-four megabits. Pretty That's impressive. That's just for downloaded. DSL. Yeah. Yeah. Upload, upload. I've never gotten more than like ten to eleven. Mm -hmm. You got to bear in mind that this is being done through a phone line, which is very skinny and very small. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it if uh, you don't know what that is, think of an Ethernet cable, but like <laughs> a quarter of the size. <laughs> I don't think my, my my audience is about my age. I think most people know what a phone line is. Well, you know, you don't know about the podcast listener. Oh, actually, let me let me find out what. No, I think my my podcast has like an uptick at like the sixty five plus. Oh, does it really? Yeah, I. Let me have a look. Mike. 